First things I noticed, even at the airport, you know, was her breath, but I didn't know how to bring it up. And I don't think she realizes it, but I do. And if I told you I was the same height, maybe I would have a chance. It's insane. I'm just, I'm a bad person, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm Rosemary Vega from 90 Days Fiancé Season 4. I'm single mom and I'm from Manila, Philippines. Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. For this video today is House Blessing. So guys, excited na ako. Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Woo! Throughout this video, we are going to be analyzing Rose's new relationship with Greg and comparing it to her old relationship with Big Ed. Rose's new boyfriend, Greg Sherwinski, is a 53-year-old Australian businessman. And would you look at that? He stands at 5 feet 10 inches, so not a necklace ankle biter like Ed. <laughs> Greg is the manager and creator of his own real estate firm over there in Australia. And this man has sold more than $100 million in property throughout his stellar career as a real estate agent and broker in Australia. In short, Rose's new guy is everything Big Ed wishes he was. Do you guys remember when he used to try to give us business? advice on YouTube. We will sell no wine until it's time. If you ever find yourself in the sales process trying to sell, stop. Because people don't trust people that sell. They trust you. Bet, like how you try to sell the fans of the show cut out stickers of your face. I'm a successful businessman, but please buy my stickers. Not gonna lie, we're gonna be spilling quite a bit of tea in this video, so make sure you stay until the end of the video. Recently, we saw Rose on 90 Day Diaries cooking Filipino egg rolls with her sisters. Rose then explains to the audience that her 90 Day Fiance journey started when she met Ed via social media, so let me take you guys back to about two or three years ago. When Rose and Ed began their online relationship, he was 54 years old and she was 23 years old. I mean, legal, but if the math is mathing, when he was 31 years old, she was one which is kind of like Epstein. Just about everybody that watched Rose and Ed's season came to the understanding that he did not come into the relationship with good intentions. He really prioritized coming up with a social media career and he used this girl to get famous and then also tried to paint her as a gold digger. Rose says on 90 Day Diaries that after three months of talking on social media, Ed came to the Philippines and they soon realized that they weren't meant for each other. Flashback. Stop it. Oh my God. Ouch. Ouch. My name's Edward Brown, but people know me as Big Ed. Also, it's funny because I'm not tall. Before we continue reviewing this trash TV show, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. On Audible, you can find the largest collection of audiobooks. You'll discover exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. As an Audible member, you can choose one title per month to keep from the entire catalog, and that includes bestsellers and new releases. New members can try Audible free for 30 days, and the Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere, whether you're going for a walk in the park or eating a sandwich at a restaurant. Typically, I listen to audiobooks when I'm working out at the gym or doing dishes. You know what book I started recently was Andre Agassi's book, Open. If you don't know who Andre Agassi is, he's really famous in Las Vegas because he's from Vegas and he's a huge tennis star. My dad was actually friends with him and they used to play tennis together back in like the 80s. It's a memoir, so in this book, Andre talks about his life and his toxic relationship with his father, a lot of things that the public didn't see, and it's a really good read. If y'all are interested in getting started with Audible, go to audible.com slash your wet sock or text wet sock to 500-500. February 23rd, 2020, the world met Big Ed and Rose on Before the 90 Days. Ed introduced himself as a lonely 54-year-old man from San Diego that made some mistakes in his past, for example, cheating on his pregnant wife. Edward says to the audience, at least I got a daughter out of it. My daughter Tiffany is the best thing I've created on this earth. Obviously, for everyone that has eyeballs, she got her looks from her mother that he cheated on. Ed communicates to the audience that he didn't make any time for relationships because he was too busy prioritizing his daughter and her needs. He met Rose on Facebook and after only three short months of talking to her, he's very sure that he's in love with this girl and he wants to propose to her. That's suspicious. Right now, Ed's driving over to his mom, Nora's house, and when she brings up the fact that Ed hasn't communicated with his daughter, Tiffany, in the past couple months, he says something that I found very interesting. I'm so wrapped up in being in love and excited that I finally met somebody after 28 years that I haven't thought about how this is you know, affecting Tiffany. So this dude spent the first 10 minutes of his segment trying to convince the audience that his daughter's really important to him, yet he didn't consider his daughter's feelings when it came to his relationship with Rose. Present day, Ed and his daughter don't speak, they don't have a good relationship, so when he's trying to convince the audience that his daughter's the most important person in his life, it's highly jokes. Next time we see Ed, he's putting mayonnaise in his hair in an attempt to look younger for Rose when he touches down in the Philippines. Mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, it's conditioner. I found out that mayonnaise makes it smoother 
and less dry. Anyways, Ed then informs the audience that he lied to Rose about his height. He said that he was 5'2", but he's actually 4'11". You should stand up because we can barely yeah. see you on the screen. He's gotta be the first dude in history that's lied about being 5'2". I've heard of guys lie about being six foot, but never about being 5'2". Ed says to the audience, I hope that Rose will accept me for me. I think it's really funny how he's like, I hope she loves me for me. How do you expect someone to love you for you when you're not being honest about who you are? You have 4,000 friends on Facebook? I don't know. <laughs> I think you want us to react like, whoa, dude, that girl is definitely a sleuth. Rose is very evasive when I talk about her past. She shuts down. She doesn't want to talk about it. And that, that bothers me. Whoa, that's so sus. She has that many friends on Facebook. But you know what would be more sus is if she was accused of sexually harassing coworkers in the workplace. Mm. Ed. Ed then adds that he wants Rose to take an STD test because he's a germaphobe and he's afraid of bacteria. And he's basically insinuating that this girl's dirty as because she's poor from the Philippines. Fast forward, we meet Ed's friend, Rich, who has known Ed for 14 years, and he says that he's never been serious about a girl until Rose. Ed then shows his friend Rich lingerie that he bought for Rose and an engagement ring, and his friend's like, whoa, aren't you moving pretty fast there, brother? Rich then proceeds to ask some very intelligent questions about Ed's relationship with Rose. Does she want more kids? Did she tell you that or not? Shorty wants another child. She wants a girl. It's not looking good, Bev. I haven't told her this. I don't want to tell her this, but I want to get like nipped. <laughs> okay, so you know the love of your life wants more children and you're hiding the fact that you want a vasectomy so that you can no longer have more children until you touch down to the Philippines and then capture her reaction when the camera crew's there. Let's just manipulate the situation and take that obvious deal breaker and just save that card to play later. You need to tell me that's, you know, that's gotta be fair, so. What she's getting into, I'm serious, like. You're scaring the out of me because I haven't really thought through it. This through, obviously. dude, I haven't thought this through, so. As Ed is leaving for the airport, we see his suitcase and notice that there's a bunch of stickers of his face on his suitcase. And this is the first time that a cast member that has been on the show, 90 Fiance, has done this. And it showed all the fans that Ed went on the show for the wrong reason to get very famous. Fans of the show hate hypocrites and throughout their entire relationship, Ed has set this narrative that Rose is a gold digger and she's an untrustworthy person. But off rip, he's lied to her about countless things before touching down in the Philippines. Cutscene over to Rose, she's a single mother in the Philippines. Philippines, and at this time, her son Prince is four years old. Rose explains to the audience that they have no kitchen, no toilet, and they sleep on the floor. It's a very hard life for her in the Philippines, but she tries to stay positive. When this was filmed, Rose lived in the back of her sister Maria's store and helped her run the store. <laughs> What's fair is fair, I got a dog on Rose here. I don't like that she's having her son call Ed dad. I feel like if you're a mother, it's very irresponsible for you to have your child call your suitor father until they meet in real life and you verify that he in fact wants to take over that father role for the child. The next part's so joke. So Rose's sister asks Rose if Ed is handsome and she shows her a picture of Ed and she says, well, if he's nice, then it's okay. <laughs> I feel nervous Ed to stay in my house because my home is so small and my bed is small so, and I'm, I have no aircon. Yeah, it's Ed setting himself up for failure right now. This is 100% not gonna be okay. The majority of Americans love their aircon. I know I do. I 100% sleep better with the air blowing directly in my face and I'm assuming Ed is the same kind of way and I hear that it's hot as balls in the Philippines. As Rose is talking with her sister, it's revealed that having two more kids is Rose's dream and she wants Ed to give her these children. It's not looking good, Bev. But it didn't end up happening that way. Better look next time, Ed. Get it? Ed communicated to his friends and family back home that he sent Rose $5,000 worth of gifts to the Philippines. And Rose communicates to the audience that the gifts did not arrive. She's optimistic that they should be arriving in the next couple months. But present day, she never received these gifts. So many fans of the show assume that Ed lied about sending those gifts to Rose. Rose's sister doesn't sugarcoat anything. She basically said that Ed is fat and ugly, but he's rich so he can provide for Rose. So she's okay with their relationship as long as he provides for Rose and her son. Next we meet Rose's dad who grills his daughter about her relationship with Ed because he questions Ed's intentions because of the age gap. He doesn't think that he's going to respect his daughter. The dad was right on the money, but fast forward to when Rose and Ed lock eyes and first meet at the airport. Ed says, I'm beyond elated. I'm so happy right now. He looks like he's about to bust in his pants because Rose is everything that he imagined she would be in real life. Whereas her, she was expecting him to be a couple inches taller. I expected you are tall to me. Tall, more tall. <laughs> Short to me. <laughs> 
Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments, but to me, it seems like the lengths that a mother will go to provide a better life for her and her child, it seems like Rose is willing to look past his physical appearance and hoping that his character is warm and kind, and it doesn't happen that way. I thought if I told you I was the same height, maybe I would have a chance. I want to be your man. Yeah, you're a man. You're my king. You my know? I'm her king. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice. I am willing to make. At the airport, both Rose and Ned said that they love each other when it was their first time meeting in real life, which I found very sus. Then they take the car from the airport to the hotel. While in the car, Ed asks Rose if she's ever stayed at a hotel before, and Rose says to Ed, yes, I've stayed one time for a New Year's celebration with my friends at a hotel. No guys. With guys, but friends only. Ed then takes this as another opportunity to allude to the audience that Rose is an untrustworthy person and there's a lot of things that he still doesn't know about her past. I'm not really understanding how this makes her an untrustworthy person. Like, Ed, you've never gone to a party, a New Year's celebration, and slept in the hotel room with a bunch of friends. It's interesting watching this guy try to paint her out to be an untrustworthy person when she's answered all of his questions that he's asked her on camera. Huh, he's got his face sticker on his passport as well. We know why this guy's on the show. This has to be the most desperate for fame person in 90 Day Fiance history. I wanna take it slow. Okay, you're so sweet. Yeah, I wanna, I want you to feel comfortable. Two seconds later. I want nothing more than to be intimate with Rose right now, but until she takes an STD test. Dang, he was about this close to coming across as a gentleman. Turns out that he doesn't want to sleep with her because he thinks she's dirty and has STDs. We're the same height when I'm sitting down. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hmm. Rose says that because she just met Ed in real life, she doesn't feel comfortable getting intimate with him right away, so she's really appreciative that he wants to take things slow. This is Ed's first trip to the Philippines, and you can tell because he seems like a fish out of water. He's still getting used to the crowds in Manila. So the mission on Ed's mind is to buy Rose pajamas because she doesn't have pajamas. So they stop at a street vendor to buy said pajamas. 180 pesos. Give me a wallet. You can't just grab from my wallet. Okay. I want to see how much this is. I don't even, I don't even know how much this is. Rose, if she's trying to help you with the exchange rate because you're not familiar with it. How much? 180? Awesome. If the change. No. Yeah. No? Keep the change. It's, it's, it's a 10 pesos. Thank you. Okay. See this. Mr. Big Ball or little Edward wants to give us business advice, but he doesn't have 20 cents to spare for a street vendor in the Philippines that obviously works really hard for his money and is out in the hot sun all day. Ed says to the audience that he doesn't like that Rose tried to grab his wallet and he says, that's just not something that you do. I'm gonna try to give him the benefit of the doubt because it's really hot in the Philippines and he looks like melted ice cream. He's not used to that humidity and you can see that by how his shirt looks absolutely drenched. My problem with Ed though is that he keeps trying to make this girl look bad and set this narrative like she's a gold digger. If she really was in it for the money, she would target a richer dude. Mission accomplished. Good work. Like when was your last ex-boyfriend? So black in my Facebook, so I don't know where. Nothing like asking loaded irrelevant questions on the first day of getting to know someone. How about asking a question like, what is your favorite movie? What do you like to do for fun? What's your star sign? I know, I know. So there's a test that you can take. Yeah. You test me? So on their first date in real life, Ed goes on to explain that he wants Rose to get an STD test and it gets so silent and awkward in this room. It's so hypocritical that this dude wants Rose to take a test, but he himself doesn't want to get an STD test done. You want me to take a test? Yeah, both of us. I would feel comfortable in the States. I'll take a test, but not. I'm not going to do it here. Yeah. I'm disappointed. STDs are not region specific, so it's perfectly reasonable for Rose to want to confirm that you don't got monkey dick on your balls, bro. I mean, if anything, you come off as a creepy sex tourist, so who's to say you're not talking to a bunch of girls in the Philippines, not just Rose? First, I think it's unfair. You're the one that's not being honest with me. Before we talk about me taking any test, if you're not going to talk about your past, then I'm not comfortable moving forward with this relationship. This conversation ends with Ed not agreeing to get an STD test himself and still insisting that she gets one. And then he walks away from her at the table and leaves Rose to cry alone at the table. I asked Rose to take an STD test and it's so frustrating because I don't think she understands why I need to know that. Oh yeah, for sure, bro. I'm sure her small brain can't comprehend that you wanna verify that she doesn't have STDs so you yourself don't catch STD. Edward, between us, what are you trying to hide? You take one too many trips over there to Tijuana it's about an hour drive from San Diego, so. Rose then communicates to Ed multiple times that this conversation really insulted her and she's feeling really upset about the situation. Then he communicates to the audience. How can we build our relationship on a strong foundation if she's keeping secrets from me? Huh? How tall are you again, Ed? You, you need to tell us, you know, that's gotta be fair, so. 
You said that you were 5'2", turns out you're 4'11". Also, dude, can't wait until you tell her that you want to get a vasectomy and you don't want to have more kids. Something that she can't wait to do with you. I'm not going to spend want, the rest of my life with somebody I can't trust. You want to know who's the father of your prince? It's in my own, her life. Your life is our own, our baby, the own wife. So I never talked to her. Bro, you're 54 years old. You're this girl's elder. You should act like it because she's not pressing you about the many relationships that you've had in your past. This fight is unresolved. Rose is really angry with Ed over this, which is justifiable. He books her a separate hotel room, gets her in a cab, and then storms off. As Ed's hobbling off, the producers catch up to him and they ask him, what happened, Ed? And he says, I don't believe in love. This feels like something I would see Michael Scott say from The Office, and I'm not gonna lie, I chuckled once or twice. Ed, much like Humpty Dumpty, had a big fall and regrets asking Rosemary to get an STD test. It was a disaster. Ed tries to call Rose, but she doesn't answer. So then he calls his friend Rich to get some good advice from his friend. Rich told Ed basically to communicate better and be more honest, which is fair advice. And then messages Rose to meet him at a cafe so he can apologize in person. And she actually shows up, which is really surprising. Ed takes the initiative to apologize to Rose and communicates to her that he trusts her fully now. He doesn't. Ed also pulls out the corniest line I've heard in a long time. He says, Rose, you're teaching me how to love. I have no idea what 80s rom-com he stole that line from, but if you do know, let me know in the comments below. If Ed was a Super Smash Bros character, he would be Kirby because he's pink, he has no neck, and he sucks. Since Rose and Ed made up, he invites her back to his hotel room where he asks her to take a shower, change into something comfortable, calls the concierge to send up some champagne, and start to set the mood. I get older. They stay the same age. Champagne arrives and he's like, oh, be very, very quiet. I don't want to spook her, Georgie. Rose comes out of the shower wearing a robe. Ed hands her the champagne with a strawberry in it. And if this was any other dude, I would say that this is romantic. But with Ed, there's always an agenda. Ed's feeling really comfortable, so he offers to give Rose a foot massage. I'm going to give you the best foot massage you've ever had. Okay? So just relax. Breathe. <laughs> Look at her face. She's like, somebody come get this dude. I know that Ed's trying to come across romantic here, but he comes across really creepy for some reason. He might as well have me written on his head because he needs to play it cooler. And you can go ahead and take off your robe. Oh my God. Ed starts rubbing Rose's feet and legs and it's obvious he didn't give her a heads up because she didn't shave her legs. How do you say kiss in Tagalog? Halik. Halik. Yeah. Okay. May I halik you? Very smooth. When this dude said this, it was actually a monumental moment because it was the first time in history that the entire country of the Philippines was cringing. Rose is being awkward and playful with that here. He begs for a kiss on the cheek. She says, okay. He kisses her on the cheek and then he says, well, how about what on the lips? Surprisingly, she agrees to a kiss on the lips. He kisses her and he acts like he just won the mega million jackpot that's been eluding me for years. Oh my God, that was nice. <laughs> Oh, wow, well, first and last, hopefully. Kissing Rose felt like heaven. I don't even know what to expect tonight, but I've dreamt of this moment for three months. He's acting like that's a long time. Ed has a unique way of making this girl feel like she's comfortable and safe and then sweeping the rug out from under her. The next morning could have been a scene in the series of unfortunate events because they ask Rose what happened the night prior and she admits that her and Ed had sex. Ed's overjoyed, obviously, because she didn't even charge him. <laughs> Ed says, last night we made love. It was awesome. Let's put it this way. I'm on cloud nine. I can't wait to do it again. I think she enjoyed it. I wasn't paraphrasing. He said all that out loud. I think she enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm willing to bet she did it. Next thing you know, Ed says to Rose, I noticed last night that your legs are hairy like mine. <laughs> How about a deal? I shave my beard if you shave your legs. I'm all about equivalent exchange and it seems fair because Rose mentioned that his beard hairs prickle her and that bothers her. So that's why he's proposing this deal. Why? They shaved my legs. Ed then says to the audience something that upsets women worldwide. Leg hair is less feminine for a woman, and on a girl, leg hair is gross. Bro, how are you gonna look like this? Ah! And you're pointing out all this girl's flaws. Like, body hair is a perfectly natural thing. In a later season on the show, he has his mom shave his back for him. Like, he himself is a hairy dude. So I feel like if you have hygiene tips for this girl or preferences for you, and you would feel, you know, more attracted to her if she shaved her legs, why are you not having that conversation in private? And then gives Rose an ultimatum to either kiss him or go and shave her legs and she chooses to go shave her legs because she's disgusted at the thought of kissing this dude, which is jokes. Rose is slowly but surely starting to mentally check out and we can see that by how she just starts to answer Ed in grunts. He says, I love you. And she says, ah, ah. Last night was awesome. I think the champagne really got her excited. And um, the next thing you know, we're 
you know, we're making love. And Yo, that is not a fletch to say it like that. If anything, it seems like he took advantage of this girl, which is why he had to get her drunk in order to sleep with him. And it's especially sus because when the camera crew first started asking Rose what happened last night, she didn't really want to answer their questions and seemed like she didn't want to admit to sleeping with Ed. So I'm very curious, like what happened? This is such an L, it's way worse than the walk of shame because it's broadcast in front of the entire world. What do you see? I see what I like. Wow, it's like watching that makes your soul leave your body. I don't know how I'm gonna mentally recover from that one. Very nice. This actually is a chore to make this video. Anyways, Rose then starts to shave Ed's beard and then they drive to her hometown. When they finally arrive to Rose's hometown, Ed says to the audience, oh wow, I'm like, holy shit, looking around here because it seems like I'm in a third world country. No shit, bro. You didn't Google the Philippines before you showed up. Like when I travel anywhere, I like to watch a couple YouTube videos about the place I'm going to. Ed goes on to say to the audience, what have I got myself into? I'm shocked about the conditions, but Rose told her family I'm staying with them, so I can't back out now. Just about zero sympathy for you. We have this crazy thing called the internet. You've been talking to this girl for three months. You should have known and been familiar with her circumstances. You could have Google image searched this. Next thing you know, Rose's son Prince comes running out to meet Ed and he's very excited. Ed pretends like he's excited but he says to the audience, I'm freaking out a bit because if I propose to Rose, I'm a father again at 54 with a four-year-old. Why are you there? Why are you trying to convince this girl that you want to fill that father role for her child if you have no intention of doing so? Rose then shows Edward her home and this is what he has to say about her house. What do you think of my home? What do you um, think? Well. What do you say? Well, where are the windows? Big, big windows. That's not a window. Okay, that's okay. Wow, bro, what an unnecessary dig for him to make. He's judging them off rip and they made him a feast. Rose and her family obviously look cleaner and healthier than Ed is. No flying um, uh, bats or cockroaches. <laughs> I don't, want that. I don't know, you don't know. A lot of Filipino families aren't that wealthy, but despite that, look at the spread they put together for him to welcome a guest into their home. Meanwhile, they picked the worst representations of our country's citizens to go on these reality TV shows. As they all wait for Rose's father to come and eventually join them for dinner, Ed is sweating profusely. And then once her father finally arrives, he goes to meet her father. And then this is the first question that Ed asks Rose's dad. Are you okay with me dating Rose because I'm one year older than you. <laughs> but, I will kill you. Oh no, Humpty Dumpty's having another fault. Bro, where were you raised? Clearly it was a household without basic etiquette. I don't care what culture you're from, it's very polite to get to know someone before asking them a loaded question. Why you intention with both us? Every prince. Um I just wanna, you know, get to know her and um, no games and go from there. That's my plan. Because back home in America, he communicated to friends and family that he fully intends on marrying this girl. Fast forward, gets to the Philippines, they have sex, he gets what he wants, and now his tune starts to change. Ed then raises a toast to the fam bam and says to the audience that right now he feels really nervous because Rose's sister Maria asked him for money on Facebook and also asked him on Facebook to not tell Rose that she's asking Ed for money. And I feel really uncomfortable because Rose's sister asked me for money. He's going for the narrative once again that they're all using him for his money. Ed even says, seeing the way she lives, I'm concerned I'm her meal ticket and way out of the Philippines. If we're gonna be technical about it, little Edward, you're the one that's setting a false narrative because you're the one that promised to bring this girl over to America and give her an easier life for her and her child. You communicated to this girl multiple times that you wanna take over that father role for her child. The reason why you're doing this, bro, is because you wanna create this narrative so that you have a way out of this relationship. Edward's positively shooketh right now at the fact that he has to spend the night at Rose's house during a thunderstorm in the Philippines. Rose reminds Ed that it's rainy season in the Philippines and yeah he probably should have looked up the weather before he came and like verified when rainy season was. Like, next Rose's dad walks in the room and says that he wants to sleep in the same room as Rose and Ed. Her dad communicates to the audience that he's not very comfortable with Rose and Ed sleeping together alone in the same room and he wants to make sure that this guy shows his daughter respect. Aww. He's just trying to be a good dad and looked out. Also it's very strange that the dad is better looking than her boyfriend right like is that's weird. Ed then says to the audience, I have never shared a room with my girlfriend and her father in my life. This guy had one shred of empathy. He would realize that what he's experiencing for one night is what this girl has experienced her entire life. Like this is all she knows. She grew up in the Philippines. She grew up in this house. You guys come from completely different cultures and you're not even making an effort to get to know her. He then communicates to the audience that he has a skin condition and has to sleep on sheets with a thousand thread count. He also communicates that he sent sheets for himself that he was planning on using 
freezing during his stay, but they didn't arrive. Right now there's a tropical storm happening, so he hears thunder and says, oh my God, is that thunder? I'm scared. Throughout the night, he basically acted like the cowardly lion from The Wizard of Oz. And in response to him acting like this, Rose says to the audience, he's acting like a big baby. <laughs> Edward Brown is very lucky to be born and raised in this day and age, because I think in any other time period, he would have got murked so fast. What the f am I doing? This is insane. Bro, just treat it like camping. Honestly, it's not that bad. And in a couple of days staying there, you can go back to your self-indulgent lifestyle in the States. Great. Great. I'm so happy that this happened to him. Honestly, dude, sweating might do you some good because you're out of shape. You're already there now. There's nothing you can do about the situation. So you might as well just try to be positive. And then says to the audience, after seeing the way Rose lives, you know, who wouldn't want to come to America for a better life? I want to just rip my hair. This is the 20th time that this dude has said this to the audience. In what way, shape or form is it guaranteed that this girl would have a better life with you in America, Ed? His perspective on Rose, her family, her culture is very flawed because he's coming from a perspective that you can't be happy in life without an abundance of things. Little Edward, happiness isn't in the fancy house or the fancy car, living in the fancy side of town. Happiness is something that you give yourself. Are you okay? It was hot. I survived. <laughs> you survived? Yeah, I didn't Isn't that comfortable last night? No, I didn't sleep at all. Ed says to the audience that spending the night at Rose's house was one of the worst nights of his life and he can't spend another night there. Oh, I can't bear to spend one more night in a place without air conditioner. So when Ed tells Rose that he's unwilling to spend another night at her rundown place, Rose admits that she's very disappointed with him. Ed then says to Rose, if I got a hotel room, would you come stay? I kind of want to take a vacation, just you and me. The ironic part is that before he touched down in the Philippines, he communicated for these three months that he wants to take over that father role for her child. Yet he shows up to the Philippines and now he wants to isolate the mother from her child and go on a tropical vacation with just the mother. I wish I would stay to my home and spend time to my son. Then you have Ed trying to save face for the millionth time and trying to convince the audience that he's really sad to leave her son Prince behind. Yeah, Eddie, I'm sure you're devastated leaving her son behind so that you can go bang out his mom. At least they got to bond though, if you consider bonding giving someone a hug when you're first meeting them. Next you know, Rose and Ed's dad take a shower together, but not in a sus way and more of a father-son bonding way. Ed says that taking a shower with Rose's dad is one of the weirdest experiences he's ever experienced in his life, which is kind of weird because they're not even naked, they're just dunking water on their heads. I don't think it's that weird. As Ed is done showering, he locks eyes with the rat that's seen some shit. Oh my God. Imagine being five while making it all the way across America, all the way to the Philippines. You're down on your luck, down bad. Next thing you know, you see Ed shower. I'd be traumatized too. Rose, what is that? I did a mouse. I smell a rat. <laughs> Anyways, Ed decides to accompany Rose and her dad to his piggy farm. This van they ride into the pig farm is public transport, so they didn't have to pay for the ride, which I thought was really cool that they have that in the Philippines. In the van, Ed tries to make conversation with Freddie, Rose's dad, but he says because of the language barrier, it is really challenging. As I get to the pig farm, I get a good look at what Ed is wearing. He's wearing trainers, which is not good equipment for a pig farm. If you look at Rose's dad, he's wearing boots, so he's ready for the mud and shit. Also, let's talk about genetics because that's important when you're planning on breeding with someone, right? Let's look at Ed try to climb this step real quick. On athletic, disgusting display. Why would you want his sperm inside of you? Ed meets the pigs, it kind of reminds me of Spirited Away, and the pigs are all looking at each other like, whoa, how do you get out of the pen? <laughs> Why is he walking upright like the other humans? Ed eventually steps on shit on the pig farm and his Nike trainers, which was to be expected. He then takes plastic baggies and wraps them around his shoes. I used to work as a farmhand in Montana. I was on my Tristan from Legends of Fall vibe, and I'll tell you what, if he did this on the farm I worked on, he would have got made fun of bad. Okay, yeah, hold on. <sighs> Oh, take her yourself. Right now, this dad thinks that you're a bitch. If Edward genuinely liked this girl and actually had money, he wouldn't care about $100 Nike trainers and care more about creating a good impression for the father of the girl that he's planning on marrying. Okay. Right there, okay. Oh God, okay, okay. Oh, Fumbleitis, look at this dude, looking like Honey, I Shrunk a White Sumo Wrestler. Oh my God, the unathletic display. <laughs> What a fuck up, and he keeps dropping the food, throwing the food at the pitch spaces. <laughs> oh yeah, dude's got so much money, he's worried about keeping the $100 Nike trainers clean, for sure. If I was there, I'd grab those pigs and I'd wrestle them. You guys wanna see my piggy real quick? Who found a box? No, you got Michaela's shoe? That's my big puppy, Gilly Do Every time I grab one, I say, monkey, monkey, chucky face. <laughs> and keeps sliding around and screaming, son of a bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> Son of a bitch. I love my job. It's then revealed that Freddy, Rose's dad, sleeps next to the pig, so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because Rose sleeps next to the pig too. <laughs> <laughs> Edward looks absolutely shooketh from this experience and says, oh yeah, tell your dad I had fun. Ed then asks the dad for permission to take Rose on vacation, just the two of them. And the dad says, yes, as long as you treat my daughter well. She was not in fact treated well, but we're gonna get to it. And then says to the audience, I'm so glad we're going on this vacation away from her family and away from this environment. What a two-faced little weasel fuck. How about thanks dad for helping me walk? Not only did Rose's father not judge you, but he actually was trying to bond with you and show you his way of life. Who are you to disrespect him and judge his way of life? You stick your hand down your girl's pants in public at the rodeo. Bro, Bro you're 57 years old doing cringe middle school shit. There were kids sitting behind you. You're at a public place, you're at the rodeo and you're gonna go for a sniff to like get those dingleberries out of Liz. I got a little sidetracked. Let's reel it back to, I can't be in this environment anymore, Mr. I love Asian women, but I don't respect their cultures. I came to Mary Rose, but I'm not sure it's a hundred percent true love on her end. So I need more time alone with her before I put a ring on her finger. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments, but I firmly believe that the only person that Ed has come close to loving is himself. Ed's hyped to go on this trip alone with Rose. He says goodbye to her son, pretends like he gives a shit. And then this is what he says to the audience. Not just, you know, a way for her and her son to get out of the Philippines. It's actually jokes how many times this guy is trying to convince the audience that she's an untrustworthy person when he's the one that proposed that her and her son come to America and he will take care of them. He will fill that father role for her son, Prince. Ed and Rose fly to the island of Palawan in the Philippines and don't assume that Ed is dropping bands. He's not. The show paid for everything. I know things I'm not supposed to know. Awesome news is that this is Rose's first time on an airplane. She got the window seat. She's hyped. She's even vlogging to earn some EXP before she starts her own YouTube channel and I'm gonna get to both Ed and Rose's YouTube channels at the end of this video. So make sure you stay until the end of this video. I know this. Out. I hate repeating myself, but once again, Ed said to the audience, I want to verify her intentions before I marry her. This narrative they're going with with their segment is so aggravating to watch. And it's annoying about the show because once they start a narrative, they have to see it through to the end and the narrative never changes. And I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm just giving constructive criticism because it feels scripted when the narrative doesn't change. They get to Palawan. It looks really nice. Kind of reminds me of Hawaii a bit. First morning of the trip, Ed has some surprises for Rose and he gets her a bikini and some lingerie that she cannot not wait to try on. Rose is blushing when Ed gives her the lingerie and she says to the audience that she doesn't know how to try it on. And then Ed goes back to his bag for more gifts. He then pulls out mouthwash and a toothbrush because he says that her breath stinks. He says, Rose, your breath isn't pretty. Honestly, for this particular issue, people wouldn't have as much a problem with it if he said this in private. But this guy's social media rise is literally from pointing out all this girl's flaws. Meanwhile, he looks like an egg and she hasn't said anything about that. One of the first things I noticed even at the airport, you know, was her breath, but I didn't know how to bring it up. And I don't think she realizes it, but I do. You say this girl's breath isn't pretty, but you use mayo as conditioner. So I'm willing to bet that you don't smell pretty either. Rose then informs Ed that she's very aware that her breath can smell at times, but it's not because of her breath. It's because of her stomach because she's had an ulcer. At this time, I hope she saw a doctor and got the help that she needed because she seems really young to have an ulcer. The thing that aggravates me the most about the situation is that they're at a nice hotel. I'm sure that Ed could call the front desk to ask for a doctor, someone to come up and check on Rose, but he doesn't do that. He just stares at her blankly and makes her feel bad for having Having this condition. This dude does the most to try and convince the audience that he's so in love with this girl, but if you were in love with this girl, wouldn't you try to help her? I'm so insulted, I wanna punch Ed, I'm embarrassed, and he's a very rude person. Rose then walks to the bathroom, Ed says that he loves her, and she says, you're ugly, which I chuckled. I'm not gonna lie, I thought that was funny. Once again, Edward says he feels bad for embarrassing his girl on national TV. So right now they're gonna take a boat ride over to another island with a national park, and in this national park, they have monkeys. As the lovely couple's walking to see the monkeys, Ed asks the tour guide if the monkeys are in the trees and the tour guide says no majority of them are on the ground although occasionally they will be in the trees they walk 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 until edward comes face to face with the monkeys there's a little monkey hi little buddy there's another monkey over there Ed screams, ah, the monkey's on me, and unathletically runs behind the other person. You guys gotta remember that this guy's only 4'11". You know, Pee Wee Sherman, from his perspective, these monkeys look ginormous. They could very well look like King Kong. Ed says, these aren't the cute monkeys I was expecting. Ed says, before you knew it, we were surrounded by like 15 monkeys staring at us, staring at me. Yeah, but you guys brought fruit, I'm assuming, to feed the monkeys. We can see the bags of fruit in your hands. So I think the monkeys want the fruit, and they don't really care about you, but... That's just me. That's the answer I came up with, but I could be wrong. What kind of creature is this? Too fat and slow for ape. 
but too smelly for human. He want the food. Write that down. Thank God for Rose having a brain and restoring my faith in humanity. What about freezing up like a little bitch when a monkey's rolling up on your woman? Thank God they're in the Philippines and not Florida because y'all know if a gator was rolling up on them, he would use Rose as bait to run away from the gator. Later that night, Ed sets up a romantic dinner for Rosemary next to the pool and forget candle lit. This shit is tiki torch lit. Honestly, he started off the night good. He complimented her looks and said that she looked very beautiful tonight. I just want to take this in right now. Just be no, with you. The main reason why I wanted to come here with you was for us to really understand our, our feelings. Ah, uh, this dude sends so many mixed signals, and it seems like a proposal dinner, but he's not going to propose, and Rose is even like, if he was going to propose, this is the night. He's really setting the mood, but he always has to test the f out of this girl. I want someone that loves me, that won't ever leave me, that respects me, do you want that with me? How can you demand respect and loyalty when you don't embody those qualities yourself, Ed? Let's be real, right? You didn't respect and weren't loyal to the mother of your child, let alone your current fiance. I've heard from many people that Ed has been cheating on Liz all the way to present day. Ed goes on to say that he's not 100% certain of Rose's intentions for this relationship. And then the food arrives and he's like, oh, okay, why don't we talk about this after we eat? How are you gonna bring this shit up and then be like, oh, let's talk about it after we eat? I'm just surprised Rose didn't get up and push him in the pool. How do you expect this girl to eat? I'm sure her appetite is ruined because you've once again said that she's untrustworthy for the thousandth time. And then explains to Rose that he doesn't trust her because her sister Maria asked him for money. When I was in San Diego, your sister Maria asked me for money, for help, but also asked me not to tell you. Rose then communicates to Ed that she had no idea that her sister Maria asked him for money. I wasn't sure if you were involved, but you're telling me you're, you're not. Yeah, I know. Okay, I believe you. Okay, I believe you. Theodore Roosevelt, my favorite president, once said, speak softly and carry a big stick. Well, Eddie is speaking loudly and carrying a small stick. Your sister made me doubt you, but no more. I am 100% sure that you're being honest. You promise? I promise. You chose not to trust Rose's intentions because you yourself don't have good intentions in this relationship. And it's funny that conveniently, whenever there's a problem, it's always somebody else's fault. And the biggest crime in my mind about the situation is the fact that the American cast members get paid for their time, but not the foreign cast members. So Ed is getting paid for this and Rose isn't getting paid for her time. With uh, both the honeys, the relationship is good. Yes. So Adam Rose decide that they're gonna talk to her sister Maria together. Rose says to the audience that she knows her sister is struggling financially, but it's still wildly inappropriate that she went behind her back and contacted Ed and asked him for money. Rose also communicates to the audience that she doesn't want Ed for his money. She truly loves him and wants to marry him. Rose then communicates to Ed that she wants to build a strong family with him and have babies with him. And Ed avoids this topic because he has other plans. As we saw earlier in the video, Ed plans on getting a vasectomy. And this is a secret that he held from Rose throughout their entire relationship. Next thing you know, Dildo Baggins has the nerve to hobble over to Rose and tell her that he loves her and kiss her. He actually withholds this information that he's planning on getting a vasectomy and doesn't want more children. I can't make this up. He actually waited until the next day to tell her so that he could have one more night of pound town. Next day, Rose and Ed are chilling at the beach when Rose goes into the ocean to swim and then communicates to the audience that he does in fact want to marry Rose, but he doesn't know how to bring up the fact that he doesn't want more children with her. So he decides to call his friend Rich and get some advice from his friend. Rich actually gives good advice. He tells Ed to be honest with Rose and tell her the truth. And if it doesn't work out, then it wasn't meant to be. Got Tina Rose and Ed doing a belly bump in the pool. Bye -bye. I don't want more kids, but she does. I didn't tell her sooner because I didn't want to lose her. Wow, convenient to tell her the truth now after you got all the sex you wanted and got a bunch of free promo for your stickers. It just gets more manipulative the more you think about it. I like the view. You do? Yes. You're my best view. Me. Ed then finally tells Rose that he doesn't in fact want more kids and she's very shooketh because that's not what he communicated to her at the beginning of their relationship or throughout. Ed proceeds to explain to Rose what a vasectomy is, but he does it in a really dumb way. He basically says, wiener, schnip, schnip. She's probably thinking, bro, he want to be a eunuch or something? Like, I know it's not that big, but you know, something's better than nothing. Why you not tell me last night? I didn't know how. Mm-hmm. 
because he's a pig, that's why, and he wanted to give you five seconds of fury while he could. Rose goes on to say, I told you before I wanted two kids, why didn't you answer me like this? This girl's been so patient with Ed, despite all the disrespect he's thrown her way, she tries to extend an olive branch to this egg humanoid and says, I'm gonna give you time to think about this, and then Ed responds with this. I don't need time. Rose, I'm telling you now, I don't want more kids. Ed goes on to say, I wanna be able to give you the best life I can with what I have. I'm not rich, I work very hard for my money. Quick question, let me know in the comments. Is it also a pet peeve for you when people say, I work very hard for my money? Like, bitch, we all work hard for our money. Ed goes on to say, I only have enough love and money for you and Prince. Do you still love me? Nah, you don't get to ask for validation after dragging this girl through the mud this entire season. Rosemary asks Ed for time to think because she has to digest all this new information that he threw her way and he just stares blankly at her because he's not getting his way. Fast forward next day, they meet up after Rose goes on a walk to collect her thoughts. Why you not tell me the truth? You not want a baby. What do you mean? Why, I'm, do you Why you not tell me first before you come here? Oh, Rosemary hitting the critical hits right away, leaving this man speechless. He doesn't know how to respond. What, bro? You don't understand what she's saying? Ed gets hot and bothered and panics and says, Because I'm 54 years old, I don't want more kids. That is not correct, Billy. That is not what she asked. Rose responds, Why are you not telling me the truth? Why do you not tell me first on chatting? Why do you tell me right now? Why do you tell me now or yesterday? Why have you not told me before coming here? Hey, you love to see it. Rose isn't raising her voice. She isn't saying demeaning things to him, calling him names. She is just just spitting facts and putting him on the spot and it's pretty savage to see. Ed then says, I should have been more truthful. I apologize. I should have said I don't want more kids. You can take your apology and shove it up your ass. A sorry does nothing for this girl after you got everything you wanted. You got an interesting segment on the show. You got all the sex you wanted. Now you're willing to apologize and be honest at the end. Oh, Rosemary then unleashes all of her hidden power like Teen Gohan and says to Ed, you first lied to me about height, then you want to give me an STD test, right? And about the mouthwash and why you tell me now I'm sick. I have an Ulcer, I'm so disappointed because you always embarrassed me. Oh, she hit him with the Filipino two-piece and the soda. Really proud of her for standing up for herself. Imagine if English was her first language, she would have put this dude in a body bag. Change your behavior because you another see another girl. And I think you give her again what you hurt me. All right. So you think I'm bad. I'm just, I'm a bad person, okay. Yeah. Hey, I'm so happy she told him to change his behavior so he doesn't hurt more girls in the future. Way to look out for the future sisters, Rose. Hurt people hurt people, a cliche, but in Ed's case, it's very much true. Now, Rose wasted a lot of time being here with Ed. He gets up and walks away and tries to play the victim. So she's like, all right, I'm gonna go back to the hotel room, get my stuff because I wasted my time spending it with this dude and it's just more days I could have spent with my son, Prince. <laughs> all right, look at the sticker placement, y'all. He knew exactly where the TV crew would be filming, which is why his suitcase is facing that way to once again showcase his stickers that no one buys. I feel hurt and I feel sad because um, Ed cannot accept it. He own mistakes. Rose right now is walking out of a toxic relationship. It's a very satisfying moment for the audience. It also proves that she wasn't there for the money because if she was there for the money in the green card, she would have stuck this out. Rose says to the audience, I liked Ed when we met online because he gave me respect, but in person, I realized who the true Ed is. Y'all know Ed expected that cliche moment from movies that he's watched where the girl chases after him and begs him not to leave. Rose didn't do that. She just left. Honestly, after years of watching the show, Rose is the only woman I've seen that has walked away from someone that has treated her lesser than usually the women on the show stay in these relationships and think I can change him. I can't hear her anymore. It just hurts so much. I mean, I'm shocked. I waited 28 years to find love again. So Cap, he's only been talking to Rose for three months. He entered this relationship to go on the show. It's very apparent. When I was a little baby wet sock. My mother told me that the best revenge is success. Now with that in mind, let's take a look at Big Ed's YouTube channel and Rose's YouTube channel because she's become insanely successful on the platform, making videos that her audience enjoys. Meanwhile, Ed hasn't. Ed's most popular video, bar none, hands down, is a Korean mukbang where he says he loves Asian women. I love Asian women. <laughs> He's got an Asian woman fetish confirmed. In fact, during his collaboration with Polly Shore, Ed said that he has an Asian girlfriend. This was filmed a couple months ago, which makes me think his relationship with Liz is strictly for the show because she is an Asian. Because of the boost that little Edward got from going on the show 90 Day Fiance, he got a lot of eyes looking at his YouTube channel. Looking at Ed's channel, it's obvious that the most popular content on his channel is the eating content. Let's play this video, Get Roasted. What the hell? Who the f are you, you pile of Sitting on your sofa eating Doritos? You disgust me, man, in your hair. Maybe you ought to take some mayonnaise and rub it in your hair because your split ends look like 
Oh, by the way, your breath, I can smell it through my camera. Why don't you try a little mouthwash? Just in case, let's put this over your head for now. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Sorry for the cringe, but it feels scripted and unauthentic, plus terrible roast, plus disabling comments is a bitch move. Overall, this shouldn't have been uploaded on your YouTube channel, bro. I imagine that the majority of his subscribers subscribed for the eating content. Last eating video they saw was Big Ed destroys the world's biggest burger. Whoever edited this video and filmed it did a good job. In my opinion, it's one of his best videos. He has an intro with 80s music and within the first 30 seconds, he says he's gonna eat the world's biggest burger. I'm gonna go eat the biggest burger in the world. Awesome sauce, we got a clear mission. We're gonna watch this necklace wonder eat a giant cheeseburger. 12 minutes, sure, I got time to spare. About two or three minutes in, he interviews the owners of the restaurant, don't care. Damn, those buns look soggy and the fries look frozen. Edward starts the challenge and it's becoming quite clear he has zero experience competitive eating wise. You can tell this guy's never watched a Furious Pete video before. Even though he's going at it in his own pace, this is the content his subscribers want to see on a consistent basis. So the video did well and got over 1200 comments. He is coming go on YouTube, the most important thing is to make content that resonates with you, where you're authentic and you're proud of the videos that you're putting out. If you focus on views and compare yourself to other YouTubers, you're never going to be happy. Thanks he broke the record. Meanwhile, we see the plates next to him with all the food. <laughs> I did it. I did it, you guys. I finished the whole thing. See you later. He said you forgot something at the table. I did? Yeah, I better go check it out. This is not my table. I wasn't sitting here. This wasn't my table. Oh, Eddie, you're such a kidder. Dude ghosted his subscribers for about 10 months, then came back to YouTube with a 46 second get roasted video. <laughs> Followed by him farting in jars and trying to sell those, which is an unoriginal idea. And it's one of those things where if a girl does it, it's a fetish for creepy guys to buy. To be a man 57 years of age and think that selling your farts is going to be a profitable business scheme is a stretch to say the least, my guy. If I'm one of your subscribers, I'm incredibly insulted because you ghost me for 10 months. I get no eating content and then you try to sell me your farts like why would i buy your farts and then to make matters worse about two weeks ago you post a video big ed is a gamer if your gaming highlight is you killing a crawler that you didn't down in fortnite please uninstall the game we already know you don't game one and two this is even funnier knowing that you have a manager and a publicist instead of selling farts that will generate zero revenue how about selling a mayo infused conditioner see now we're talking shop business wise that clip of you on 90 day fiance putting mayo in your hair went viral viral and resulted in the king himself making a video about you. PewDiePie! Little Edward Brown, you actually pay people to give you terrible business advice. The category YouTube placed you in is eating, so obviously making gaming content is counterproductive. And are you ready for the truth bomb? You're trying to make viral content, but the topics are subjects you aren't passionate about, which pushes not only your subscribers away, but the members of those communities. I had a game of lead the other day, and when I play, I only play as Heimerdinger, and every time I kill somebody, I say, the marvels of science! The other day I'm running down mid, my jungler isn't giving me enough gains. So I start mouthing off to him, he starts mouthing off to me. By the end of it, we became friends. But here's the problem, Ed. You're not in this gaming world, bro. You don't speak this language. Your ego's already out of control and you're censoring your YouTube comments. Trust me, bro, you want no part of the gaming community. In summary of Big Ed's YouTube channel, it's really just an outlet for him to make a couple minute skits, trying to sell his audience whatever shitty products or services he feels like selling at any given time. <laughs> my advice for Ed is that if you really want to be successful on the platform and not dependent on the show to keep being relevant, you should follow Rose's example and post consistent videos about topics that your audience actually wants to watch and topics that you yourself find interesting and enjoyable to talk about. Let's talk about Rose's success story now because this random collection of dog shit actually hurts my eyeballs. During the tell-all, it was quite obvious that Rose caught the verbal hands by all the Americans and was gained up on. On this show, they gained up on the foreigners because people are dying to come to the United States to try to work in one of the most competitive job markets in the entire world and send their kids to school here. <laughs> what did you see in my dad? I mean, did you really love him? Because he really did love you. Because he was willing to give me up. Yes, I really love your dad. I really, don't, really, don't, really, don't really get, don't get, it, don't, get it, don't get a tone with me, please. I'm just asking you a general question. Her father, who mistreated Rose, could care less about her, and many times on the show bragged about giving up his daughter, like Thanos. Tiffany seems like the kind of woman to get upset solely at the side girl and not the cheating husband. It feels that Ed doesn't see or appreciate all the effort that she did for um for the relationship and that but what effort his daughter said she's just a karen in the making she keeps lashing out at the woman her dad dates not her daddy whose validation i'm assuming she's been chasing her entire life but rose is saying ed is lying and trying to hide the fact that 
he wasn't really a good person to her. But what about all, all the secrets? If you watch the show, actually, you would realize that your dad lied to Rose about his height, sending 5K in gifts to her and her family and wanting more children. So it's comical you're coming at her for lying. Hey, Tiff, remember when you were in the womb and your dad cheated on your pregnant mother? That's everything we need to know about this dude's character. Who cheats on their pregnant wife? Oh, look who's tilted. Daddy did love me. Oh, <laughs> good form. Next, Rose airs out Ed's dirty, stinky laundry. He asked her for a sex video call and once he gets called out for this, he deflects and denies, which is comical because we have him on camera acting like a creepy sex tourist. Hey, Rosemary, I bought you some lingerie for you to try on for me. <laughs> so nothing like hearing from a creepy dude. Hey, I want you to try on this lingerie for me and bang my brains out. And by the way, your breath smells like shit. I'm saying it's a lie. It's just a lie. Oh my God. It's a lie. I apologize for asking you to shave your legs, but let me explain. I live in Southern California and women in California they laser their legs, so. Surf's up, bro. Not all women in Cali do that, Ed, and the majority of dudes in Cali have necks, so. It's pretty embarrassing to have your personal hygiene, per se, out in the public. I can accept your apologies. Why? Why? Because you always hurt me, and you're up, girl. You embarrass me. You're up and down. You embarrass me. I don't have kids myself, but I can only imagine how frustrating it would be to trust someone that conveys to you they want to step up and take care of you and your child, only to find out the hard way that the entire relationship was a lie for a social media company. Ed entered a relationship with Rose, fully understanding her financial situation, and set the narrative to be her white knight in no-neck armor and rescue her from her poverty-stricken life. Didn't happen that way, though. He turned out to be a liar and a manipulator, but instead of putting herself in the tower and waiting for another Prince Charming to come and rescue her, Rose decided to rescue herself, which is a Yas Queen moment. Sister decided to become the heroine of her own story, no longer the damsel forced to settle for an inferior necklace male. Rose uploaded her first video on YouTube two years ago titled get to know me in said video she answers the questions fans had for her simple in concept yet super effective when you take into account how much footage gets cut from these trash reality tv shows and the false narratives that they set in this video she's bubbly positive and has cutesy edits she's the girl on fire boy oh boy did this video rip 3.5 million views scoot over jerkules a star is born next video is titled chubby bunny challenge with prince this video is very wholesome it's funny throughout and it shows the great relationship and bond that she has with her child Prince. Next video is one of my favorites on her channel titled Rose Cooking Segment Number One Cooking Shinny Gang. I don't know if Shinny Gang's how you pronounce it, but it's a sour and savory Filipino stew that absolutely slaps. She shows herself getting the fresh ingredients from the local street market. Rose got hella chicken for one dollar, okra for 18 cents, green beans for 18 cents, tomato, onion, and garlic all for nine cents a pop. This healthy meal she's about to make is very inexpensive. Throughout the season, I saw many fans profess they wanted to learn more about Rose's culture, and she's giving that value for free on her YouTube channel. It's to the point where you got people in comments begging her to start a Patreon so they can directly donate to her so that they can see more cooking videos. This video got 2 million views and she does relatively simple tasks, only this time she is showing us her house from her perspective without Ed. Pretty wholesome video. I'd rather watch this kind of house tour than a TikTok or mansion house tour. The older I get, the more I start prioritizing authenticity and just normal people overall. This video she made was actually a request from one of her subscribers, so I think it's really cool that she and involves her subscribers and cares about their opinion and makes videos that they want to see. And in the spirit of that, if you guys have any suggestions for videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, we just got super thanks. Every dollar you donate goes towards giving my dog Gilly Do a better life and is greatly appreciated because I do put in a lot of work into these videos, so it's a great way to support me and our channel. In this video, Ro shows us her bedroom wall and look at the difference, y'all. Like she has pictures of her family and friends and herself. Meanwhile, a little pervert's office wall is filled with lewd pictures of women. So who do you want to follow? Right? Rose proceeds to do laundry and bathe her son, Prince. He handled the bath time way better than Ed did. Over the next couple weeks, Rose made a lot of videos about Filipino street food and about fun things to do in the Philippines overall, which was nice to see. Something I've noticed watching Rose's videos is that she uses dolphin noises and a lot of different noises after she tells jokes. And this rubs some American viewers the wrong way because they think that she should adopt her style. But that particular style is unique to Filipino TV. So she is staying on brand, actually. Rose posted a video 
video behind the scenes of her photo shoot and the photos went viral because everyone wanted to see what happened to Rose and Ed after the boost they got from social media from being on the show. So Rose became a model in the Philippines, ended up making enough money to buy her own house and start her own store. She named her store after her son Prince, so it's called Prince's Store, which I thought was really wholesome. So at this time, Rose is becoming uber successful and less and less reliant to be on the show. Ed is becoming more reliant on the show and he's doing videos like the 100 Chicken Nugget Challenge. In this video, what we're really doing is using Ed as an example of everything not to do because when you glorify fame and money and power and disregard self-respect and the opinions of the people that actually love you and have your best interests at heart, this is what you end up becoming. A little mean old man that has to tear women down to build himself up because he's insecure. I want to be my most authentic self and I'm trying to chase the me in 10 years from now, right? Like I want to evolve and grow every year. So it's funny for me to like sit down and review somebody like Ed because it's just baffling to me that you're like twice my age and you haven't done the internal work yet. You haven't grown, you haven't matured. You attract what you believe you're worth because she has more respect for herself and a higher self-worth as she was able to attract Greg, someone that treats her as an equal partner and someone that actually wants to step up and be a good father figure for Prince. It's a beautiful thing. I'm excited to see what happens with them. As for Ed and Liz, I'm trying to be reformed. So I'm gonna say something nice now. I hope that Ed and Liz can chase their most authentic selves and you know do the internal work and grow because that's important and you can't be taught that. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Comment below, subscribe, love you, love you, love you. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.